All right, so I've been getting a lot of questions recently on how I made my web portfolio. So today I'm gonna to show you how I made my web portfolio in under 10 minutes. Everything here is completely free. If you want a custom domain and a hosting service, then you have to pay. But for the purpose of this video, we're gonna use a free method where it completely works. It's published on the internet and any employer or any of your friends can see it. This is a very minimal code approach. So feel free to customize the code if you know how to code or if you want to. So I personally use this as more than just a portfolio. It's my whole website entirely with my newsletter, my blog, my about me page and my projects. So if you guys wanna do that, feel free to do that too. But just for this video, I'm gonna show you how to make it your portfolio, where you display all your projects, if you're a software engineer or a data analyst, data scientist, etc. The target focus here is for you to land a job, and I feel like this is a very good way for you to stand out and show your work. If you guys wanna understand why you should make a portfolio, check out my video over here where I explain why you should make a portfolio and how this can benefit you. All right, let's get into it. All right, so the first step is you wanna click the link in the description and you wanna download this free template. This is the template I use for my website. It's completely free. So now once you downloaded it, it should be on your downloads folder or wherever you store it. Great, so now that we have the file downloaded, we're gonna double click the file so that we can open and see it live. Uh, this is the default template right here. As you can see, it looks pretty good, but we're gonna make some changes to make it more personalized to us. Uh, I'm gonna take away the section at the bottom here and uh, probably remove all these pages. Uh, I just want to show two or three projects and uh, everything else can just stay the same. We're going to open the uh, HTML file in our Visual Studio Code or whatever ID you have. And once we do that, we can see the raw code. This is just the HTML code. We're not going to go into CSS and uh, JavaScript here. We're just going to play with the HTML code to make it uh, fit our style. So the title of the website is going to be your name or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it my portfolio and then uh, as an intro, you can put whatever you want to put. I can put uh, data science portfolio, and then you can put a short description down here, or you can just leave it blank. But I'm going to put uh, follow me on LinkedIn. I'm going to go get my LinkedIn linked. So this is uh, something you want to pay attention to. So all these href references, they're references to links or images or whatever. So these are the things you can mess with to customize or personalize your own links, your own social media accounts, whatever. Uh, I personally only like to link my LinkedIn because it's a because uh, it's a professional page. So uh, use that information as you may. Great. So now that we have this, we're gonna go into the main part where we customize the code to make it our portfolio. So if you want to see the live changes, all you gotta do is save the code. I'm pressing Command S on my MacBook. You can do the same in Windows by pressing Windows and S, and then refresh the page. You see the changes are made right here, data science portfolio, follow me on LinkedIn. And then uh, I wanna change this to a portfolio or something else, yeah, probably portfolio. So to do that, you can just go right here where it says massively and change it to portfolio. And uh, so this right here is the navigation bar. You can see it by the comments, the comments label what sections these are. So this is the navigation bar. We're gonna change this to say portfolio or project page, so portfolio page, and then this will be uh, about me maybe, and then this can be resume. I'm gonna take away the pages and just uh, leave them with just the names. And then these can be your links to your social media accounts. Uh, like I said, I recommend just using LinkedIn, but if you wanna put your other social media accounts there, that's fine too. You could probably put Kaggle or GitHub accounts there. Those are professional uh, portfolio accounts too, so I'm sure your employers would like to see that. And then now we get to the main part, the body of the web page. So uh, as you see over here, this is the body, this is the part where we wanna change the most. This is called right here, this is the featured post. So I usually put my favorite project here or the one I wanna talk about the most. You can use uh, your oldest project or whatever it is. As long as you follow a cohesive pattern, that's fine. So uh, me personally, I'm gonna leave the date as April 25, 2017, because I don't care but I'm gonna put a small description of the project. So the project I'm gonna use is the one I use for our five minute project series. It's gonna be the analyzing 120 years of Olympic history. So I'm gonna copy the exact title of the project actually, and I'm gonna put it as the headline right here. And then you see this href uh, hashtag here, that's where you put the link to that project. So. Mine is hosted on Kaggle, so I just copy the Kaggle link and I'm uh, pasting it there. And then here, down here, the P stands for paragraph. So uh, this, this is basically where you would write a short paragraph describing the project. So we explored uh, 120 years of Olympic history data to gather some interesting insights. 
And then we can, uh, instead of using these default pictures right here, we're gonna go to unsplash.com and get some non-copyright uh, pictures that are more relatable to the projects you've done. So for this one, we did a project on Olympic history. So I'm just gonna get, uh, yeah, this looks fine, Olympic rings. And we're gonna use that as, a, as the project picture. So you wanna get that image you just downloaded. I would rename it to something more relevant to what it is. So mine's just gonna be olympic.jpg and put that in the images folder. And uh, when you go back to your code, replace the old picture name to the new. So mine is olympic.jpg. Great, so now once we have this, you can save your code and refresh the page. Everything should update. Great, yeah, everything's updated. And if you press the title, it should take you to the Kaggle page. This is working perfectly fine. Uh, we also wanna be able to click the picture and link to the Kaggle page. So what I'm gonna do is change this href right here and remove the hashtag and put in the link to my project. Uh, instead of full story, I'm gonna change it to read more. And yeah, that's so that's our featured post. And uh, this is the one that's gonna take up the most space on the body. Next, we can do our sub posts or our other posts that are not featured. I'm gonna post another project that I've done, the car mileage project, which we also did in our five minute project series. So uh, let's get the link for that one real quick. Great, I have the link and I'm gonna paste it right here in the href section. The date can stay, the, actually the, I'm gonna change the date to May 20, May 20, 2023. And let's do May 15, 2023, car mileage, MPG. Don't need a break. Great, so once we have that, uh, we're gonna need an image. I'm gonna get an image from Unsplash again. Uh, this time it's gonna be something related to cars. So uh, this one looks cool, so let's just do that one. It's gonna send it to the downloads folder, take it out, rename it to something more relevant, put it back in your images folder, great. Now we're gonna adjust this to reference the car and we're gonna write a short description about what the project is. We analyzed uh, sev several factors to, to determine which factors are significant in predicting miles per gallon. We analyzed several factors to determine which factors are significant in predicting MPG. Great, so another link right here. And instead of full story, I'm gonna do read more. Great, now that we have that, I'm gonna go back to this page right here. Refresh, cool, it's updated. So I don't want all the other default templates that are there, so I'm gonna remove all that. Um, you wanna keep the section, so the, this is open section, closed section, so it still remains in that section. And in the footer right here, I'm gonna take all the pages out because I don't want, uh, I don't have any additional pages, so I'm just gonna remove the whole footer section, actually. All right, cool. So I think I have everything I need right here. Uh, I'm gonna, now, so this is hosted on your local device. Nobody else can see this unless you publish it or host it somewhere else. I personally host mine on a hosting service. I pay $150 a year to host it and I paid a, a couple bucks for my domain. I think that looks more professional, but if you want, you can use a free service like GitHub, which is what I'm gonna show you right now. So go ahead to github.com. I'll leave a link in the description below. If you don't have an account, go ahead and create an account. And uh, once you have your account set up, hit this new button right here. This creates a new repository and you're gonna push or upload all these files that you just messed with into that repository. So this is an important part right here. Uh, when they ask for repository name, think really carefully what you wanna name your domain for this website. How do you want employers or your friends or your parents to find this webpage? So the extension's gonna be your GitHub username slash, for me, I'm putting web portfolio. You can use whatever you want. I think web portfolio describes what I want my 
uh, web page to be. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. And uh, you can initialize it without a readme. I'm just gonna initialize it with a readme for fun. And then once you're done, click, uh, hit create repository. Great, so now we have our repository created. What you're gonna wanna do is upload the whole folder, the whole HTML massively folder into this uh, repository so it can upload all the files you have into the whole database essentially. So yeah, I'm gonna upload all the files into the repository. And this can take a couple minutes because there's a lot of files, there's 74 files to be exact. But yeah, so once you've done this, there's just a couple more things you gotta do before it becomes public and you're set, you have a web portfolio, you did it for completely free. You can take that link and put it in your resume. In fact, you can change the domain to make it shorter on your resume. And if it's a hyperlink, they can click the link so that they can go and um, see your web page uh, just like that. What I recommend is also putting this on your LinkedIn profile or your Handshake profile. This helps employers who come across your profile to see that you have a portfolio and can access that portfolio. So that might be a fun tip for you guys. Great, so now this is done, you're gonna wanna scroll all the way to the bottom and hit commit changes. This might take a couple seconds too. Great, now that it's been committed, we have all our files over here. We can change the readme text to describe the code if you want to, we're not gonna do that for this, uh, this specific project. You wanna go to settings and uh, once you go to settings, you wanna hit pages and this is the part, this is the most important part. If your branch is uh, set to none, you wanna change this to main so that people can see and view your web page. It's published, basically. Okay, once you've saved it, it should be published. All you gotta do is copy your domain name right here. And uh, the extension is just gonna be whatever you named your repository before. So mine was web portfolio. There you go. This is your portfolio. Uh, go ahead and check out all the links to see if it works. So the LinkedIn works. Yep, works. And then you wanna see the most important part if your projects work, so yeah, this works, great. Go ahead and customize this, add all your projects and make it full so that it looks more professional. I recommend having five to 10 portfolio projects on your portfolio. This is the ideal amount. Employers won't go through everything, but they'll have enough to look at to determine if you're a good candidate or not. I talked about this more in my other video on how to become a data analyst in three months. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description if you guys wanna watch that. But yeah, that's all I have for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed, I'll see you in the next one.